In the early 1940s, the military recruited aspiring artists from art schools and trained them in the art of camouflage and deception. They became the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops. The men called it the Ghost Army. Their mission? To deceive and divert the enemy. They were sent to Europe with rubber tanks and phony artillery. While impersonating many different army units, these artists secretly brought along sketchbooks and painted and sketched their way across war-torn Europe from England to Normandy, Paris, Luxembourg, and into Germany. Their story is one of smoke and mirrors, while their artwork remains a unique insight into what Europe looked like during the war. I remember the first time I saw the real phone tanks being experimented with, and that was in uh, Fort Benning in Virginia. And um, uh, we, we didn't really know as a group why we were there, but actually it was a testing ground to see the, uh, the efficacy of the operation and the idea of creating an illusion. We were there to uh, create confusion. And sometimes it was confusing for us too because we didn't know what we were doing. We would have insignias on our, uh, on our sleeves and giving the enemy see what was going on according to our insignias, which were wrong. We used to change these uh, insignias and all on our sleeves uh, uh, almost every other week. These two art students were drawn into war and later settled in Rockland County to raise their families. Though spending many years of their careers in New York City, both shared their creativity and talent to further enrich the culture of Rockland County. Ned Harris is well known in Rockland County as a designer, photographer, and curator. He balanced this local cultural activity with a career as the principal of a large New York package design studio. Commuting to the city gave him the opportunity to indulge in photographing the streets and people of New York. I always say um, art is the great connector on a social level, and the things uh, I remember looking back on this, the whole experience of an 18-year-old kid when I got in the Army, uh, spending two years of a life away home, away from home, and, uh, but I'm reliving it now. And, and the tool is art, imagery. It, it brings back total recall uh, of uh, that whole uh, moment of my life. I, I went in and as, as a young, almost a child, and I came out a man. And uh, the rest is history. Bill Sales illustrated a number of books for Western Publishing and Simon & Schuster. In the 1970s and 80s, Bill and Shirley collaborated as a husband-wife team to produce the popular step-by-step -step series of craft books that sold millions of copies worldwide and sparked the macrame craze in the 1970s. Locally, he curated many exhibits and taught at the Hopper House. Tuesday nights would be people all around the house. I, you know, the, the, the rooms are small, I, I, and, and some of them would be in the, in the hall. Eighteen years I did that, of oh, one night a week, and, and I really loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and we worked together, we fought yeah. together too. Company B yeah. and he was yeah, Company C. Yeah. So we knew of each other, but we yeah. weren't the buddies that when At uh, that time. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it was a coincidence that uh, after we got out and we were starting our careers, we were both back on the same track. Yeah. And um, when I was uh, leaving my, uh, my studio, he took over my, uh, my place there yeah. and my um, 
drawing board, and he still has my drawing board, <laughs> and he never gave it back to me. Why didn't you do that? Well, I was for, for taking care of it. Oh, oh, oh okay, <laughs> that's fine. I mean, I don't even charge you for it. <laughs> Bill Sales and Ned Harris, we give tribute to your service on the battlefield and to your relentless art by sharing your dreams and observations in your work so that we may see ours.